So here's the project for Astronomia and it's at 126 BPM and it's fairly simple and straightforward. These are all the MIDI and the loops that we've used in the project, but let's just have a listen first. Here we go. So that is the track and let's get into it. So the main melody is over here on instrument one and as you can see it has an ES2 synth which you can find under synthesizer two. I really really like ES2, it's one of my favorite synths in Logic if not my favorite. And it's a pretty straightforward um, sort of patch here. Um, if you look at the original video for the producers talking about it, you can see that they say it's just a straight up saw wave. Um, I feel that there's a little bit more in that because the synths are different. Um, so for ES2, we have a saw wave on oscillator 1 mixed with a little bit of a saw wave on oscillator 2. There's no oscillator 3 at all, so um, it's just two oscillators. Um, another thing to notice is distortions are almost on full and it's a soft distortion. So um, that's generally it. And you can see that it's mono unison and the blend is kind of right to the uh, filter one. And here's where the cut is. So um, if you want to go into more detail, you can download the project and have a look at how this was constructed. Now, um, something to look at is that you can see that there is an EQ on this and also a space designer. Um, all the ones that are muted over here, which you can turn on like this, yeah. Um, they're actually just experiments in trying to get the exact sound. So I didn't want to take them out just to show you that maybe, you know, there's a bit of part of the process that sort of tried to get the kind of sound that I want. Um, so th in the final, this is what I uh, got and as you can see, let's take out the, the, the reverb and EQ, right? And let's have a listen to it. It sounds like this. Uh, you can see as well, there is um, a automation on the track here. And um, if you, I turn on the automation under ES2, um, mix and filter, you can see the multi-mode filter cutoff which is the filter we're talking about. And you can see that happening right here when we automate. And right here, when it starts going up, you can see that this filter opening up. And then we go into the sort of the main sound of it. Now you can see that the main sound is fairly close to the original, but I think the EQ helps shape it a little bit. You can see that it brings out a lot of that buzziness, that distorted buzziness. I initially put a clip distortion in because I wanted even more buzziness. But it kind of took out a lot of harmonics as well. So um, I wanted all that obnoxious harmonics to be in that, that really cuts through the mix. And in this case, I use a space designer. 
just have a listen to how it sounds. So you can see that it's a large and bright um, space and um, the dry is full up, the wet is maybe about, you know, minus 10 dB. And you can see that it's this kind of reflective space, but it's not super long. So it's big and reflective, like large and bright, but not very um, long which helps keep the definition a little bit. It's not too washy. It's kind of like the original as well. It's not too washy. Um, and that, yeah, doesn't make it into this whole ambient sort of uh, uh, mess since it's a lead. It's not meant to be ambient. So that's what it is. And um, I also paired it with another ES2. And this one was uh, under tutorial settings, PWM, Pathways Modulation Scaled. So there's a little bit more distortion because PWM has that square wave and square wave has a lot of sort of like um, distorted harmonics in it. And um, I added a pedal board and I added even more harmonics with a monster fuzz without. So there's this hairiness in it and that's not too sort of like, much high-end fighting with this. So when you pair it together, it kind of gives it a little bit more fat. And you notice this one, I did not send it to a reverb. Um, this was kind of enough to be the tail and this one's just to fatten it up. And it's important as well to note that um, to have a sort of glide so glide is basically saying that um, notes that slide from one note to another if they overlap. Without overlapping, they don't glide. So like you can see that these two notes glide, but this one doesn't glide because it's not overlapping with this note. So it's about whether the previous notes overlap with it. Um, if not, they'll try to not glide. So you can play around with the glide and lengthen it or shorten it and hear how the phrase um, changes and that would be quite cool you know like now we have a glide of about what 48 so if we play around with it and say there's no glide this is too much glide okay, it's about right so when you have too much glide, the, the notes don't even have enough time to um, hit the notes before the next note comes in. So you gotta balance it out a little bit. Uh, sometimes it's nice to just loop something and just keep on tweaking it until you kind of get the sound that you want. That's kind of the lesson there. Um, yeah, remember that these tutorials are not so much about recreating something than teaching you the tools of how to create something so that you can create your own sound. So, you know, one of the tools that you can do is sort of just loop something and then tweak the sound until you get the sound that you want. And remember that synths do have a lot of movement as well. So if you want, you can automate stuff as well. If you wanted the, the cutoff to move out down a little bit, up a little bit, you know, sometimes that gives a little bit more movement. Uh, or you have a, a chorus or a flanger that kind of uh, moves according to time if you slow down the effect. So there's many things you can do to get sort of a unique sound and it's about the tools of crafting that unique sound. Now, so now we have these two instruments playing the lead. Um, I had this double from this as well, but then I uh, decided to take it out and mute it because it was a bit too heavy for this section and only when the real sort of like beat came in, then this, this sort of fatter sound would come in. And notice this is just a copy of the MIDI from this track, uh, from instrument one, but uh, I transpose it up to 12. You can just click and drag as well. Yeah. So all these, you can see the plus 12 here indicates that it's transposed up 12, otherwise it'd be too low. But you know, back to zero, it's an interesting sound as well. It's a bigger sort of like, you can hear the octave happening. But with the transposition, you just hear the, um, let's see, you just hear the, yeah. 
So that's um, that's pretty cool as well. Yeah. So it really depends on what you want from your sounds. Um, and here we have a bass that's also ES2. It's a classic synth bass under synth bass. You know, I like to for basses, I like to just sort of go here and click, 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 sort of loop the thing. And then just click to the left and right and get different sounds and see what I like. And this one's pretty cool, you know, a classic synth bass. And you know, if you want it to be um, more sustained or something, you can pull it up, you know. So, you know, understand um, how this affects the sound by tweaking them a little bit, understanding the basic theory behind them. All these ADSRs are very, very useful. Um, just look up ADSRs and you will learn quite a bit. So with the synths and the bass. So you can hear that this is pretty sort of like high and I mean like you can hear a lot of high and mids in this. So I need something a bit lower as well. And so I have a this like an octave down kind of bass. And it's also got the same kind of texture about it. And um, it's under um, 70s classic bass classic, 70s classic synth bass. So all these sounds are pretty sort of like analog classics. And um, have a listen to them together. It's more punchy, right? This one's lighter, this one's... So you compare them, uh, I'm sorry, if you pair them, you get this nice big sound. So four of them together. It's pretty straightforward and starting to sound pretty nice. So now we just need a kick. And in this case, I use a drum machine designer. So you can find drum machine designer uh, here, right? You can select, uh, hang on, where do we go from here? There is a, yeah, if you want to create a drum machine, you can go to, sorry, under, um, under instruments, and go to drum machine designer, you will get a kit like that. And you can see that there's a little arrow here which you can open up to the different um, sections of that instrument. So the kick, uh, I picked a neon drum machine designer which is sort of like this mm, dancey sort of track, uh, dancey sort of kit. And you can tweak the kits if you want to change, say like in my case, I want to change up the snare. I could um, just click on the snare and it gives you a menu on what kind of snares that you want. So I pick a, and in this case, a neon snare as well. So you can tweak it to some other snare if you want. You can see that the kick is a Futura kick. So when I click on the kick, you can see that the kick, you can pick a different one. I didn't pick neon, I picked Futura. So um, here's how it sounds. Pretty straightforward. There's a compressor over the drum kit and it's a under drums, fat life drums, which I kind of like. Turn on the limiter. It's just biting a little bit. But I, I like this compressor because it, it adds a bit of punchiness to it. So you can see that this sort of verse section here is just five um, tracks. Technically, it's just three tracks, which is a synth, a bass, and the drum kit. And that's kind of enough to give you something that's sort of like you know, uh, a dance track going, right? And the only thing that happens um, after that is the addition of these. So they're like toppers, right? And um, toppers are sort of like these hat-like things. And I use two, right? Um, if you can see here is a subtle click topper and an electro topper which you can find under the loops. You can search for toppers and you can have all sorts of toppers. Just stuff that sits on top of your main beat, right? So electro toppers, I drag it in. Subtle click toppers, I like that. And it kind of work together with everything. So with the, with the kit. And it sort of drives the rhythm a bit more. And it's pretty straightforward. That's all you need, right? And all these effects, you can see like all these falling star effects. I look for rises and fall falls. So I go like fall, you can see all these falling star effects. 
And when you drag them in, they are pretty short. Um, say if you drag this in, it is pretty short. So you could put your pointer, uh, your mouse over to the right and click on option. And you can see it turn into this sort of like uh, stretch and then you just stretch it out to whatever length that you want, right? We're not doing it for this. So yeah, we're just going back to it our original track. So I stretch the falling star, you can hear the stretching in and then what I did was I just copied this over to here and I you can see that I reversed the track. So now it's rising instead of falling. So this reverse thing is just basically reversing a track. You can see that the wave is changing on the screen right now. Yep. And it's the same with the riser. I have a riser here. Copied it over here. And um, I basically just reversed it. So, and then I added more risers. And another falling star effect that I reversed. You can see the reverse here. So this one's sort of a bigger rise. At first it falls with the same thing and it rises with the same thing. And then from this point, it's soft. Yeah, so in context. So that's leading up to the drop, right? And you, uh, there is a pad going on in the background. It's a really, really soft pad. Um, it's an alchemy pad. And it's epic and punchy. And it's really soft. You look at it, it's like minus 28, right? And it's just playing these chords, these continuous chords, which is being sent to bus one, which is a space designer. And that's the sort of generic reverb that if I want to send anything to, I'm sending to that. And it's under large spaces, halls, 3.1 seconds, bright hall. So a sort of bigger one. Um, so it sort of makes this a little bit more epic sounding. Um, and that's kind of the opening section, right? Yeah, and this one's sort of the claps. Um, for the tracks, you can put them anywhere you want in here. So you can put the claps in the claps as well if you feel like it. Um, yeah, and the kicks on the kicks, if you want to arrange them, you can see that there's a snare here, which we will come to. So once you hit that, you have to, I, I have the same riser thing. I copied from here to this section and sort of the second drop before the big chorus comes in. And you can see that this essentially is just layers upon layers. So you can see that this is the opening layer, this is the one with the, the hats and stuff, right? And then when you have the drop, yeah, it's everything plus. So it's the same thing plus um, a few things. So let's see. There's a bit more toppers here. So you have a little hat time thing. Just like a more like a tambourine actually. And this is the hat. So everything together sounds. It's busy, but it kind of works because the 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 bass line is actually a pretty straightforward one, and it's. Uh, So it's got a sort of snare going for it, a clap snare kind of thing. And you put it together, it's the... Yeah, it's a cl pretty classic sound. Um, and you know, um, the, the punchy pack comes in again. This is just a copy of this one, except that you can see that this one's even softer, minus 29. It's minus 28. So I wanted it separately so that I could sort of move the fader arm down until it's right to taste and softer kind of works for it. Helps to fill the gaps in a little bit. This is pretty sort of forward, this punchy um, thing. So you got to be careful where it sits in the mix a little bit. Um, you can EQ it if you really wanted to. So I could say, take maybe the mid out. Yeah, that would work. So 
so that sits a little bit better in the mix and um, then we come to this section here where um, the riser happens again but this time instead of cutting out right at the second beat of the fourth bar it goes right till the end so this part I just actually cut out for the for, for the um, for the yeah the the, the, the drops and um, and you can see there's a snare here which has been automated and the automation is if you go to the inspector um, is under um, a pitch of the drum machine designer right because this pitches the snare up and this is the snare track it's kind of just regular So um, you can set to whichever note, now it's from C3 to D4, it's a little bit over an octave. Um, and yeah, that's kind of, kind of how I got that, that section going, which is the same part of the, this drum kit, right? So it's kind of like this. Or just with the kit. So yeah, that's kind of it really. Um, it's really, really straightforward. And the interesting thing is how you sort of mix them together. So look at the um, levels of this, you know, um, tweak them with the, when you're playing around with the project. Um, have a copy around, have the original copy, make a copy that you can sort of mess around with and in case you save over it, that's fine. Um, notice as well on the output, stereo out, I put a compressor on. And this is a fairly aggressive compressor, Studio Fat, um, because I wanted this sort of dance track to be a little bit more sort of punchy. So you can see it's sort of biting at the start already, but when we get big, it's biting on the kicks. And you know, um, you might be uh, inclined to do something like a sort of a kick that side chain or something like that. But in this case, you know, I just plonk this right on the stereo out and I think it sounds perfectly fine. You gotta be careful with your attack here on this um, this kind of aggressive synths. So you gotta tweak them by moving them about a bit, have a listen. Most important thing is to use your ears when it comes to these things. Um, one tip that I always use is, even now, is to compare my mix with something that's uh, that I think is a good mix. And in this case, of course, since we're doing Astronomia, I compared it with that to get the kind of energy that I wanted to get. And I still sort of like tweak my settings based on how much energy that I want to get and how much of the feel of the song that I want to get. So keep that in mind. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.